uh, our main topic is kind of how do we keep dedicated players? So last time we talked a lot about recruitment and some inclusion and diversity um, tactics to use. Um, so we're going to talk all things on how to keep those dedicated players that we've recruited um, through retention um, initiatives. So I'm going to let Jesse start this first one off with team vision and goals. Yeah, so um, it's, I mean, this slide pretty much says everything there is to say. If you can't read it, um, it just says it's incredibly important that um, your team decides how competitive you want to be before each season. You know, there's always players who want super fierce competition. They want to show up to practice every day for three hours and hit the ground running. There's also players that just kind of want to show up on a Saturday and see if they can get some minutes in. Um, so you want to make sure that your team is aligned in what they want out of the season. Um, part of this, uh, this slide links to our website, www.ncrugby.org. If you have not been on the website yet, uh, which most of you should have by now, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, given that there were games played yesterday. But um, yeah, so part of that is just understanding what NCR offers as competition. Um, and, you know, this year especially, we're really good at being flexible in, um, you know, catering to what teams need based on numbers or uh, whatever, whatever else teams are facing. Um, so go ahead, Christine, over the next slide. So part of that is making sure that you have a really good team culture. You know, people don't want to continue showing up to a place that doesn't, they don't feel like they're cared about um, or that they have a place there. So some things that we've seen from teams in the past, the uh, photo that was used as advertisement from Miami University of Ohio. Thanks, guys. <laughs> we stalked your Instagram and found it. Um, so part of something what they do is like a big little program, like a sorority or a fraternity would do. And they would assign, you know, like a senior prop with an incoming freshman who's also plays prop or whatever other positions, you know, if there's a fly hop or a center who's an upperclassman, they can work with the underclassmen and kind of take them on as their little, so to speak. Um, a great way to keep more people involved even is if your men's team or your women's team also has another men's team or women's team at the school. So, um, you know, you can always work with them and, you know, men and women are going to have different views on the game. So it's really good to get the points of view from everybody. You know, team study sessions is really good. You all are called student athletes for a reason because you're students as well. So if you're helping each other succeed in class and on the pitch, you know, your teammates are more likely to trust you and understand that you are actually there to help. Um, know what your campus counselor schedule is. Uh, you know, if somebody comes to you with something and you're like, oh, I was not prepared for that. Here's our school counselor. You know, at least you're giving them resources. They understand um, that what you are dealing with is important, uh, vice versa. So, um, one of the big things that I talked about in the previous slide, team vision and goals, is kind of understanding why each individual is there. Um, so this is that social and competitive balance. At the end of the day, it's the sport that brings people together. It's true. So, you know, whether somebody is playing rugby because they like tossing the ball around, whether somebody's playing rugby because it keeps them away from doing other things that might be worse for their health, whether they're doing rugby to meet a certain requirement for scholarship, whatever the reason is, they're here to do rugby. Um, so just keep that in mind as people are coming in, you know, as you get all these new recruits, and you're like, oh, how do I keep them here? Make sure you understand why they chose rugby in the first place. Um, that definitely helps everything. Um, all of those things help establish trust. You know, if you can create a tradition with your team, that's awesome. You know, your pre-game pre chant or whatever. Um, if you can do like a pre-game, everybody listens to the same song to get hype in the, you know, in your circle before the game or in the locker room, if you do that whatever it is, that can also help build trust and bring the team together. 
a big one down here. Uh, Grizel, I'll answer your question in a second. Thank you. Um, the last one down here that is really, really big is like, don't haze. I know that schools say that all the time. And this is dual part. So don't haze because it's a bad team culture. You know, nobody wants to be a part of something that makes them do unpleasant tasks. It's not setting the precedent that, oh, you're initiated now, you're a part of us. It's setting the precedent that you're less important than everybody else here. Um, it does not accomplish what a lot of people think that it might. Also, rugby has tends to have a reputation on campus as being, you know, like a party team or debaucherous or whatever it is. It's it's the sport that's unfortunately how a lot of people know the sport of rugby, which hazing only furthers that um, premonition about rugby athletes. And that's not at all what we're trying to do within schools. We want your school to support you so that you get that funding or whatever they provide for you that allows you to play. So don't hate. <laughs> End of story. Um, Grizel asked, what does include your team's counterpart in there mean? Um, that's when I was talking about, you know, if you have a men's and a women's team, you can include them in your big little program or pairing the senior positions with the lower classmen positions. If you have a flanker who's a senior, they can work with the, the younger flankers to kind of perfect their craft. And just to kind of add to this uh, this slide here with team culture, you as student leaders, um, player leaders, captains, whatever your role is in your club, you set that culture and you really make a difference for how it's seen and followed through within your club. Um, so be aware of that. So if you start, you know, kind of little side conversations or um, uh, clicky type things, then that's what other people will see and follow. So you just want to make sure that the, the culture that you do have, and every team's going to be a, a little different, um, is really coming from the top down. Um, yeah, so, and that's actually a really good segue, Christine, into the next slide. I lost my mouse. <laughs> Burn it. Shoot. Where did it go? Oh no, let me try the screen. There it is. We got it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, All right. So Christine was talking about how things kind of trickle down. Um, it's the truth, you know, the newbies or the rookies learn from the veterans on the team. So if you set certain expectations on your team, then that's what the underclassmen and the rookies are gonna grow into doing for the next generation. So um, to keep things consistent, you want to set expectations right from the get-go. People need to know where and when practice is happening, and that should not be something that changes on a daily basis. I have listed in here if you're in the northern states and daylight really plays a big role in when you can practice in September versus when you can practice in November, which for some states it really does, actually most, I think, really, um, you know, that needs to be determined at the beginning of the season. Like, we're practicing here at this time on these days, and then as soon as we hit October 16th, that's just a day I'm throwing out there, it doesn't have to be October 16th, uh, we're going to practice here on these days at these times due to daylight or whatever. That needs to be set from the get-go so that people know what to expect and there's no confusion. Um, you want your practice and game schedules to be visible for everybody. You know, you don't want on game day, 10 minutes from kickoff, your starting hooker to text somebody and be like, wait a minute, our, isn't our game at this field? Or wait, oh no, I thought kickoff was at 12.30, not at 12. Oh shoot. Um, you don't want any of that. So you need it to be visible and accessible for everybody. And that includes your fans too. Um, Cause you want people cheering you on when you're beating people up out there. Um, these expectations need to be upheld for every single person on the team. There are not different rules for captains and presidents versus the rookies. Um, an example of that is like field setup and takedown. Everybody needs to contribute to that because it's everybody's field, right? We all use it. So we all need to have a part in picking up the cones, taking down the, um, the uprights, if that's what you do, you know. Everybody needs to have a hand in that just to set the expectation that it is a team event and we all use all of these things. And, and just quick, 
Oh, go ahead. Jesse, there's a, just a uh, Grizzle had a question in there about um, whether having rookies um, take turns washing jerseys would be considered hazing. And I think it fits in with what you're talking about. That would not be hazing. That's just somebody's role um, as a part of the team. And if that's how you have it set up, that that's sort of the assignment of rookies and sophomores or juniors have other roles, that's totally fine. And I think that fits with what Jesse's talking about with that, um, those expectations. Everybody's doing something is what you want to make sure of. Yeah, absolutely. And we are going to kind of talk about team roles a little bit later. So that's a really, really good point to bring up. Grizel, thank you. And I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. <laughs> um, so, yeah, be responsive to your players and your fans and the school. You know, if your club sports director asks you a question, that probably means there's somebody higher than them that needs to know in order to put a bunch of schedules in place, in order to allocate the correct funding or whatever. So, like, be responsive. Your team will benefit from that. Absolutely. Um, and be respectful of privacy. Just because you're a team and you're a family doesn't mean you need to know everybody's personal business. You know, it's really good for you to be there for your teammates, but that doesn't mean that they have to confide in you. Um, some people just want to keep their lives compartmentalized, and that's totally fine. You need to be respectful of that. Um, so that's kind of setting expectations so that players know what the team is all about that they're getting into. Thank you, Jesse. Does anyone have any questions on that before we go into leadership? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't see any hands raising or any chats coming through. So, um, yeah, leadership is another huge part. This is another kind of trickle down, you know, the upperclassmen, the expectations and standards that they set trickles down to the underclassmen. So a great way to get the underclassmen involved um, is to give them roles within the team. You know, you want to define what each person is responsible for on that team. And everybody should know who to go to for different things. You know, if you're like, great social media idea, you need to go to a specific person with that. If you say, hey, there's an issue with this game. It was accidentally scheduled on a Sunday. Is that right? You need to go to whoever's in charge of scheduling your games. If there is, you know, like whatever the issue is, there's somebody on the team responsible for that issue. Um, so everybody needs to know who to go to for what. And like I said, that's a great way to bring in um, the lower classmen. A huge issue that we've seen this season so far is team leadership. Um, you know, teams have now graduated two classes of seniors um, since we were last able to play rugby on a pitch because of COVID. And those leaders, um, you know, either things got lost in communication or things had not been set up ahead of time. But now it's like, we've had a really hard time reconstructing our contact list. You know, which of these teams have the correct contacts for their team, which of these teams need updated. So making sure that your lower classmen are involved is actually really helpful in case there's another global pandemic. <laughs> um, uh, Grizel, you had a question I saw maybe? Yes. Okay. So basically, um, I was just posing, you haven't gotten into that point yet though. You're still talking about um, the second point. Um, I was just being into a piece of something to that. It was about coaches. I can wait till you get to that point, though. About coaches? Oh, uh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When I get there, I'll, I'll ask you to chime in. Um, so, yeah, those first two, de defining roles, and then how are you going to appoint those specific roles next year? Um, those processes should be in place so that people – know what's happening next year you know that's really important because just because you're graduating senior and you're done with rugby hopefully you're not hopefully you're keeping your boots on the ground so to say um but just because you're done with that specific rugby team does not mean that that team goes away right they need some type of structure they need other people in place to now run the team in the same way that it was before or to decide to run it differently if it wasn't working 
And I, so, I think just to add to that piece too, it's really important as you think about how you're passing those uh, those pieces of information down to other players and start thinking about it now um, before you start elections and things, but a charter in place in a binder and how to use who's the ref or whatever system your state uses for, for scheduling referees, you know, where do you, who do you call for athletic trainers? All the must haves, um, throw in a book. We, we do this at our school, um, the directions on how to register. I don't know if that was confusing for anyone else, but being new, it was a, it was a different, a new process. It was a little more challenging. So print that stuff off and keep it in a book that just keeps getting handed down keep updating all of your contacts, even the ones um, through NCR and administrators on campus, not just the contacts within your club. Yeah, absolutely. Good point, Christine, thank you. Um, and I believe we have some resources on that on our website. It's linked in the last slide, I think, or we can put it in the chat if it's not. Um, so the next one is coaching. A lot of clubs are student run or in student coach, and it's great to have a certified coach on your team, just because I think it helps them understand um, just how to coach, <laughs> um, you know, in case the coach can't show up one day or in case you can't find one, it's always good to have somebody who's certified on your team. Um, the clubs that become most successful generally have an adult coach that stays with the team for three or more years. And now I know that in smaller towns, it's harder to find people like that. You know, I went to college in Gunnison, Colorado. Not sure if anyone's heard of that. There's a reason it's a small town in the middle of the mountains, in the middle of nowhere in Colorado. Um, so we did not have a whole lot of option for adult coaches and we had to rotate coaches every one or two years. And it, really it really felt like we were starting from scratch every single year um so it, it's ideal if you can find an adult certified coach um i know it's hard for some schools and that's where it's um you know healthy and a good idea to have a level 100 certified coach player on your team and then that way they can kind of help foster one of the younger players, if they want to become the coach, um, you know, however that works. Uh, I think it's Grisella, important with your, oh, go ahead, Christine, sorry. Yeah, just real quick before we uh, get to that question, um, with the, the a team member having the level 100 coaching um, certification, that's super important from an administrator standpoint too. Um, if you're using, you know, fields at your institution that you can, you know, say, hey, we're safe. We have someone who's certified in this. Um, it really gives your program a lot of credibility, um, especially in a backup situation. Absolutely. Um, uh, okay, so Grizel, what was your question? Yeah, so um, our coach is new and um, we're not in contact with our previous coach anymore, so I kind of wanted to ask you guys, like, um, where our coach, like, if it was required for our coach to have a certification, and, like, um, if it is or isn't, I mean, I'm guessing he would want to anyway, like, where can we access this? Um, sorry, you were just a little bit fuzzy on the microphone. Were you asking, is it necessary for your coach to have that certification? Yeah, and also, where uh, can they access it? the training yep so um all coaching certifications are actually through usa rugby the level 100 certification is it's free to get certified um you do have to have at least a 100 level to be a registered ncr coach um so you can access those through usa rugby it, that certification however does not come with the background check and the background check is I don't know off the top of my head, I believe it's like $20 or so. So it's not like free to become a coach, but the, the level 100 certification is free. Um, and you do need that as a baseline to be an NCR registered coach. And what is we'll do is question? we can send you a link to that, all that information too. Um, I'll do a follow-up email 
um, tomorrow or early in the week. And I can include that in that email just so everyone has access to how that process works. All right. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. Um, and then the, the last two points on here, you know, pretty self-explanatory. If, if things are really difficult, you can always go to an administrator on campus. Um, or if you have a professor that teaches like a leadership course or something, you know, if you, you or any of your teammates just need credits to graduate and it doesn't matter what course it is, take a leadership course. It's helpful. Um, or ask the professor, that professor any questions that you might have. I know I did that a lot my senior year when I was president of our rugby club. Um, things got pretty messy. And so I went to one of my favorite professors um, who was a leadership development professor and he helped me through a lot of struggles. So use your on-campus resources for sure. Yeah, and just uh, one more real quick resource on campus, usually through student government or student affairs departments, there's a lot of emerging leaders um, programs that you can be a part of and you can uh, seek those out and participate and get a lot of leadership training as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So this next slide, oh, uh, it's not letting me switch. I'm having a lot of technical difficulties. That's okay. Um, we're going to get into exist. some team roles. Um, so things that you can come up with for your players to do, you know, just because they're not the fastest runner, the best ball handler, scores the most tries, doesn't mean they're not useful to your team. Um, oh, I can't, I can't get my computer to switch. I might have to like, Close it and come back. I don't know. It won't switch slides. But this slide is meant to be interactive. Um, and it actually talk, uh, it has a bunch of pictures of different roles. So now would be a good time to share uh, roles that are outside of being a player that your team may have. Like, um, you know, someone in charge of filming games or yeah i mean there's the basic three you know you have your president you have your vice president and you have your treasurer those are kind of like the basic three that most teams have um if your team has something outside of that we we want to know everybody else here wants to know so please share if anyone wants to chime in or you can put it in the chat that works so we have five people on the our board for UIC. We have those three that you mentioned, and we also have uh, already in the chat too. We have a match secretary and a COVID compliance officer. Uh, COVID compliance officer, that's a great one, especially for this year. And I saw somebody said, okay, so you have somebody specifically for recruitment. Sydney, would you mind explaining what that person like does for your team? Um, basically, she's just kind of in charge of, um, like, getting our poster boards together for, like, our um, fests that, like, our school puts on and everything with all of the clubs and everything like that. And, um, like, running the social media page and everything like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and then Amanda said that you have a wellness coordinator. Can you explain a little bit what your wellness coordinator does? It sounds like a great idea. Amanda, paging Amanda. Nope, that's okay. Um, <laughs> she said basically they will help injured players kind of recover or they'll come up with healthy snacks for game time um, as well. So that's a great one. Let's see, lots of match secretaries. Um, oh, Annabelle, somebody sets up your team bonding events. That's cool. You want to explain that a little bit? Hello? I suddenly can't hear anybody. Annabelle says her mic isn't working either. Hmm.
I wonder if we accidentally muted you all. Christine, welcome back. You're muted as well. Oh no. Can I, can you all hear me? Just like yeah, I can hit hear you. you. Okay, I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you, Kiana, right? Yeah, yeah. So my mic's working. Okay. Okay. Well, if y'all can hear me, um, I'll just kind of read what's been put in the chat here as far as team positions. Um. So lots of. Okay, the, uh, we were talking about the social secretary who sets up team bonding events. Um, she said they plan weekly study nights or fun fitness events outside of practice, and they also take the lead on planning the budget. That's awesome. Yeah, having somebody in charge of your budget is key for club sports. Um, yeah, those are all really awesome. Some other ones that we have listed on here is like, the social media coordinator, so somebody who's in charge of your source, social media, um, somebody who's like an assistant student coach, somebody who's in charge of education. So like if an, a player needs extra attention on something, they can go to that player for extra help on whatever it is they need to understand. Like if rucks are really confusing, which I know it is for a lot of new players um, from experience, you know, they can go to that person um, and the education director will kind of go through things in detail and take extra time as there might not be extra time during practice. Um, you can have somebody, you know, if there's a graphic designer on your team, have them help you design kit. If there's somebody who really likes food or, um, who was it? Like Amanda said is, you know, super into eating healthy, have them plan your meals for away matches, stuff like that. So, you know, like I said before, even if they're not the fastest runner, or they score the most tries or whatever it is, if they're not the best player on your team, that doesn't mean that there's nothing that they can do for you. So that's always a great way to get underclassmen involved um, is just finding something for them to do to help your team. Sorry, Christine, I am not sure if I'm able to get it up or not on mine. Let's see, I can share my phone screen. So let's try. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we can see the screen. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I think I put mine up. Was mine showing though? Yeah, I also saw yours. Oh, you did? Did we get it then? Okay. I will shop, stop sharing mine. Okay, Christine, if you want to pull it up again, sorry. <laughs> I think it's easier uh, on can you guys? Than can you guys see it? Yep, I can see it. Okay. I just lost my. Uh, all right. Um, you're about to lose me again. It's okay. I can do it on my no worries. Sorry, everybody bear with us. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, can everybody see the slide? It says retention is fun. Okay, yeah, I can see it. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> this is so fun, right? The little frustrations <laughs> that happen with uh, virtual presentations. Um, 
But so this just real quick, because um, we're running out of time with our technical diffi uh, difficulties here. But um, just thinking about um, the rugby culture and why you all are a part of that team and how you can incorporate that into um, some retention efforts by having fun. So different things that you can do to enhance um, your your team, whether it's your team bonding or training. So this is a team, you know, doing a recovery workout in a pool. They're laughing. They're probably sore too. Um, but different ideas that you can come up with. I think I just saw one on Instagram recently. Uh, somebody was doing theme days, which that's a great idea, whether it's a color or, you know, um, some kind of like silliness, uh, whatever you can think of and ask your teammates, like, what do you want to do? What do you want to see? Maybe organize a contest or have a team song that you always sing, cook meals together, um, enter a chili cook off or something that else that's going on on campus and do it all as a team. But think about retention as being fun. Does anyone have ideas that they like love that their team team does for, for fun? Nobody has any fun. <laughs> um, I cannot just, see the chat anymore. So I can't, I can't get to it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, Thanksgiving meal. That's a great idea. Mm. Yeah. If people either can't or decide not to go home for Thanksgiving. You can have a, a friend's giving a team's giving dinner. I think we're going to start making it a tradition to go out Friday nights before a game to eat pasta. That's what we started doing this semester. Games and pasta night, love it. Watch games together and have a potluck. Yep, that's another good one. Um, maybe even like bake together or... Awesome. Yeah, just going back to um, whoever said, sorry, I can't see you because I've got this up on my phone screen, but um, whoever said, you know, watching games, together like it's always a good idea a it's fun because you get to watch rugby but also it's really beneficial to watch rugby um and if you all want to get together on a monday night or whatever because you're coming off the weekend and it's your second day after you've played rugby so you're extra sore and you want to have a light practice you can make it like a film practice and just watch a rerun of your favorite rugby team um, or you can watch, you know, if it's during the season, you can watch the MLR games, get together and watch Major League Rugby, stuff like that. Another good comment in the chat, um, banquet with the men's team at the end of the year, we dress up and stuff. Um, I'm assuming that's a separate thing from the bank. Oh no, at the banquet dress up. Um, also a great time to kind of like do silly awards. Um, you know, thinking of things like not just like MVPs and rookie of the year, um, but things that maybe stood out from players. Does anybody do anything like that at their banquets or have any really crazy award they give out? We do like paper plate awards separate from our banquet. So like those will be more of the like random weird ones. Um, and like every player gets a special one. So that way everyone kind of has something unique. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think um my senior year when I played rugby, I, I got an award for um, farting in the scrum. So that's a big no-no, don't do that. <laughs> Molly, were you gonna say something? Uh, yeah, my team does like the fun awards at our banquets too. Um, like we had things like best dancer and like um, most likely to show up to a game with their nails painted or stuff like that. So it was just like, things that we notice about people throughout the season and we just made awards out of them so that everybody got to have something. Like superlatives, I love that. Perfect, yeah. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. Um, yeah, so we, last week we talked about recruiting. Just now we've been talking a lot about retention. Um, we've given you a lot of information and don't worry, we are recording this. It's going to be posted on YouTube later. Um, so you can go back and reference it. If you're like, oh, wait, that was a really good idea. I want to go back. I forgot what it was. You can always check back with this video. So we're going to put it online. But we talked about recruitment. We've talked about retention. 
now you've gotten all these people to practice. Now, what do you do with all of these people? Um, so a big one is for scrimmages. You can do, you know, game-based activities. So rather than actually scrimmaging with just two sides, you can do a lot more like game things that require smaller teams. And then that way you can utilize your space on the field a lot better. Or you can do a lot of scrimmages that are like, you know, 4v3 or 5v4. And then that way, um, you know, you can use a smaller space or you can use just as many players but keep them in a smaller space and then that way you really learn to move the ball really well and use your space and create space it's a great training tool um so just work in smaller spaces it's really beneficial you can also for scrimmages you know have the after every try whoever scores stays on and whoever didn't score comes off and then the third side comes on and plays and kind of do a rotation scrimmage that way that always works really well um if you have a lot of people and only a couple of you know only like one or two coaches it can be really hard for the coaches to manage so some ideas are having players go to different stations um, and doing different stations. And then when the coach blows the whistle, everybody moves station and you work on something else specific. And then that way it gives the coaches enough time to kind of go around to each station um, and correct things. And then by the time everybody moves, you know, the coaches can correct the, the new set of players in that station. Um, you can also involve the upperclassmen, the veterans to help coach you know, if there's, I think I mentioned this before, um, but if there's somebody who's really struggling to get the tackling form or whatever, you can pull them aside for a couple minutes and have an upperclassman work with them. And then that way you're not taking away from anybody else's practice time. Um, using equipment, a lot of people, you know, you have your basic cones, maybe a scrum sled, you have a couple ruck pads, that's kind of the basics of what most teams have, even if you don't have that much. You can always incorporate the cost of new equipment into your team dues. You know, if you have 23 players, if you have 25 players, everybody chips in a couple bucks, that can go a long way for a new ruck pad. Um, so you can always incorporate that into your team dues. And then I think that's what I what we've got for player management. We'll move on to the next slide. Christine's going to talk a little bit about education. Yeah, so um, I'm not going to read through this whole slide and the list. You can kind of um, look through it and it'll be available for you to read later as well. Um, but basically the thought behind education with retention is the more that you know about what you're doing and, and understand it, the more invested you get. So, you know, whether it's your players, your um, administrators, your um, other uh, other teams on campus um, that aren't even related to rugby, even your fans and your parents. So if you understand the game and have some basic education about rugby and how it works and even just simple diagrams on the backs of programs in the stands um, for people to understand what the, the um, the SIRS doing and what's the touch judge doing, um, that can be super helpful with retention. Um, and then also just within your team. So like we talked about film nights, that can be fun stuff, right? But it's also meant for education and learning, teaching moments, pulling people aside um, and taking advantage of, you know, something that maybe didn't work out the way you planned um, and being able to kind of like learn from it. And then also teaching a skill back. So we know that the more we understand things more when we can teach them. Um, so that's super important. So like kind of, uh, you know, like goes with the last part of team management is everybody kind of share a little bit in that. The only thing you have to watch is like too many, too much control from people. So you want to just keep that at bay. But um, being able to teach a skill like, say, at an involvement fair to someone who doesn't play um, can be super important. Um, so that piece of education is super helpful to retention. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oop, come back. 
That's a pretty picture on your phone. Thank you. Sorry, I'm trying, <laughs> trying to find this call again. I don't know where it went. <laughs> That's okay. We'll That's back. right. Ah, yeah. oh, where'd it go? Try it. There it is. We found it. Um, so that's that's all we have for you guys on retention i we packed a lot in there um so thank you all for coming like i said this is going to be recorded it is recorded and we'll put it on youtube on our channel um so you can look it up that way homework it's not a have to but we would really really love if you tagged us and used our hashtag ncr proud in your posts on social media you can see our instagram handle um who we are on facebook and our twitter handle right there and the next one of these the next session in our series is going to be on fundraising which i think is going to lead really really well into um you know kind of the last the last couple of weeks of your fall season, you know, if your team going to playoffs or one of our best of all the rest tournaments, fundraising helps get you there. We are also planning to have our all-star tournament at the end of January. Um, so teams will need to do a lot of fundraising for that. And then going into your spring seven season, you'll, you'll want some money for that as well. Everybody needs money all the time. So we're going to help you come up with that um on october 24th we wanted to avoid halloween weekend so you're welcome uh, <laughs> yeah and um just real quick with the tagging us on um the the platforms it's super um fun for us because we love to see pictures of the things that we're talking about with retention with recruitment and especially if you've got some fundraisers coming up between now and october 24th if you want to share those photos with us We'll feature them in our slideshows and stuff um, as we kind of build um, that next program on fundraising. So if anybody's got fundraisers coming up, snap some pictures, videos, whatever you can. And uh, we love to see that kind of stuff. But thank yeah, you. That's what we did. That's how we got this photo. We went on Instagram and found found this gem from my University of Miami in Ohio. So. OK, we'll open it up for some questions. Anybody have questions? Feel free to post them in the chat. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Everybody's saying thank you. Yep. If you don't want to hang out um, and you want to enjoy the rest of your Sunday night before you go back to school, you're free to go. We're not holding anybody hostage. Thank you all for coming. Yay. All right, I think that was everybody. I told I texted Lucy and told her we were going to be done soon. Oh, I think you all saw that actually. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, I think that went pretty well. Were you able to see how many people were on that call? I could not because I was on my phone. Yeah, I took um I took names down. There were like thirteen, so less than oh, last night. Okay. But um yeah, but I wrote, I think I jotted the names down. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I will I will put together something. Um, there was one that had registered like this afternoon, so I just sent uh, a separate link to the. Um, Thanks for recording, Lucy. Bye. Bye. Sure. I'm just gonna stop recording. You guys can stay on if you want. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. No worries.